Hello, this is Mark Sermon, Executive Director of the Mozilla Foundation, uh, and I'm here to give you just a quick update from the June 2014 Mozilla Foundation board meeting. And in this quick update, really what I want to do is go through the review of Q2 that we did with the board at a very, very high level, as well as what our goals are for Q3. Uh, I've also included a link to the full slideshow that gives you a real breakdown of what was done in Q2. You can go through that, ask questions in the comments, and so on. So let's dive in. Just as a reminder, Mozilla Foundation's 2014 overall goals are grow the adoption of WebMaker, and that is really our biggest goal. Uh, and the focus there really is on recruiting 10,000 educators at the broadest, in the broadest definition of that, people who want to go and teach the web with Mozilla. Related to that, we also have a goal of enabling communities that have impact bringing in contributors for a wide variety of initiatives across Mozilla. In the case of MoFo, certainly those WebMaker contributors, but also contributors to Open News, Open Badges, the Mozilla Science Lab, Mozilla's policy work. And that's a, jo a goal that we jointly share uh, with Mozilla Corporation, who also is very focused on growing contributors. And then we have a goal around growing revenue to around 17 million on the foundation side. It's up about 3 million from last year and not dipping into our 20 million capital reserves. So where are we at? As we get to the end of Q2, we're well on the way on all of those things. 30% towards our number of people teaching target, 5,000 uh, Mozilla uh, uh, Foundation contributors alone, I think, and maybe some MoCo contributors in there towards our 20,000 contributor enable communities target and well on the way 72 percent on our revenue targets so things going well uh, and really a focus here on community growth in 2014 so what are some of the things we've done as in terms of moving ourselves towards those targets the biggest one uh, was respinning webmaker.org to get it ready for maker party uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second we started up uh, work on both the mobile front uh, that spans WebMaker, Firefox OS, and a bunch of other things, um, both on this driving contributor growth piece and just in general in mobile as a driver of empowerment. Uh, as well as we started to work on uh, with MoCo as well on a bunch of policy initiatives, which I'll talk about in a second. And then finally, big part of Q2 was spinning out much of the Open Badges project into something called the Badge Alliance. And we had fairly extensive conversation about that at the board meeting, and there'll be more information on that. There has been a, already a fair bit of information about that on the web. There'll be more coming soon. So just to kind of go into, you know, you see those numbers. We're well on our way with the contributors. You see those high-level things we delivered. I just want to go in and, and give you a snapshot into three of those things that we focused on in Q2 to give you kind of some more depth of what we're working on right now. And the first one is a snapshot of what we're calling the Web Literacy Textbook. It's probably the wrong name uh, and it's sort of stuck a little bit, but it's really the resources section of webmaker.org. And it's interesting for two reasons, maybe three. One is this year we've really uh, shifted webmaker.org to focus on the educator. And that's broadly cast teachers, librarians, parents, techies, anybody who wants to help others learn how the web works. And a big part of that uh, is a number of things we've done. We've respun the event platform, we've respun all the language. It's really oriented towards that audience. And, and that's who we think can be key with Mozilla in teaching the world the web. A second point is that a key part of that is saying we need a rigorous curriculum that those people can both use and remix and add to that covers all of the topics we care about, what's called our web literacy framework. And so what you see here is a screenshot of the web literacy framework, which is now the key organizing metaphor for the resources or textbook section of, uh, of webmaker.org. And that's just come out and it's excellent. It's a great resource for anybody who wants to te teach the web. And I guess the third piece of this is a, a big part of our contribution over time is going to be encouraging people to add their own resources and localize these resources. So that's a big place where as we focus on contributor growth, ways that people can get involved in Mozilla and have impact, uh, that's another big thing that we've added here in Q2. So that's one example of 
you know, something rich and important we did in Q2 to move the ball, and you can see it really ties both to those contributor and webmaker goals. A second place where there was a fair bit of work in Q2 was setting up uh, our policy initiative with the help of Ford Foundation, uh, who gave us a, a grant earlier this to this year, and led by a, a gentleman named Dave Steer, who joined Mozilla from Facebook's policy team. And we've set that up really as a cross-Mozilla initiative, working with MoCo and MoFo, work on a variety of things from uh, you know a variety of different policy issues on a in a variety of different ways, from direct interventions on policy topics through to putting uh, fellows out there in policy organizations who have a kind of a Mozilla attitude and technical skills. And you can see one of the things that's interesting is how this works well across the whole organization, uh, plays to MoFo and MoCo's strengths. So net neutrality is a topic that came up in Q2, and we really worked on three different tactics on that. One, not specifically looking at net neutrality, but MoCo and MoFo working together with the launch of Firefox 29, putting out the Web We Want video, which raised people, uh, gave people a chance to understand some of the broad issues in a simple manner around internet policy and weigh in on them. And we got 4 million views on that video, hundreds of thousands of people filling in a survey, some light engagement, working with the Firefox marketing team. Then in the middle of that, as we go into the fall, uh, and this is using a kind of, sorry, I should have said this, a standard engagement funnel, saying by working together, we can go at an issue like net neutrality, and we can go at it at a very broad level, as well as in a very, very deep level. And we you know, talk to a lot of people at the broad end of the funnel, find the ones who are interested, bring them deeper in the funnel and deeper. And, and this is you know, key to our, our marketing strategies, getting people more engaged. So very broad engagement in that Web We Want campaign with Firefox 29. And then as we move into the fall uh, and through the summer, we're going to start asking people to sign petitions on net neutrality. And that's where, uh, you know, MoFo in its campaign experience can really play a great role at getting people involved as supporters of Mozilla, we get them to sign up, we give them updates on net neutrality, and also at the same time, we can go back to them as we want deeper engagement and see whether any of them want to dig deeper. And then finally, the webmaker side of MoFo is actually going to do hundreds of local teach-ins as a part of Maker Party, getting people to teach others about what net neutrality is and what they can do about it. So why I show this as an example of what we started out in Q2 is it's just such a great example of if what we want to do is move the ball on policy, which is one of the things we want to do, we want to tie our stance on policy to our brand and our products, which is one of the things we want to do, and if we want to eventually find uh, take the supporters of Mozilla on these issues and turn them into active contributors, uh, which is what we want to do. We can do that with this kind of approach, where we, we talk to people in a broad way, and then at the bottom of the funnel, we give them a chance for deep engagement and volunteering. So that's a, 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 an area where we really uh, moved along well in Q2 and moved along well across the organization. And then finally, I just want to talk about the something we're calling the Mobile Opportunity Project, and basically, it's Firefox OS plus WebMaker plus the AppMaker app creation software. And this is something where, um, at the at the kind of practical level, over the six next six months, we're going to go into countries like Bangladesh and probably Kenya, India, where smartphone penetration is low, and one of the things that, and where there are a lot of local languages. And one of the things that we see as an opportunity there is open smartphones, HTML5 smartphones, or HTML5 on closed smartphones like Android, could really provide a huge advantage in terms of local content generation uh, and in terms of localization of content because it is open, because it's remixable, because the bar to learning app development is low, because the distribution model could be simpler and we can just directly text apps and content to, to people. And so what we're doing in the next six months is working with the Firefox OS team, the Marketplace team, the WebMaker team, and a set of carriers and the GSM Association to really go out and test what kind of apps and content would people in those markets create if we gave them a dead simple way to create apps. And that's going to be the evolution of our AppMaker concept. And what we'll do is we'll go out, we'll show them AppMaker, we'll run maker parties or, or learning workshops, 
and will come back and say, hey, is there an opportunity here to both empower people and build a product that really differentiates HTML5 by making it simple right on our device for people to create their own apps and just shift the whole conversation about how our apps work into something that's much more open. So that's another thing I just wanted to highlight for, for Q3 because when you just look at those number or Q2, sorry, those numbers, yes, some progress on volunteers, it's great, good revenue. There's a lot of meat underneath that in terms of what's going on. Meat that's pushing Webmaker, meat that's pushing policy across all of Mozilla, and meat that is bringing together things like Webmaker and Firefox OS in something like this mobile opportunity project. A lot of stuff I'm really proud of. And so let me just quickly take you through what are we gonna to try to tee up as we're going into the beginning of July for next quarter. And uh, you know the, the, main, the main focus of course is WebMaker because Maker Party is launching in a week or so. And so I'll, I'll go there in a little bit more detail. Uh, and towards our goal of 10,000 contributors to WebMaker, we've got Maker Party uh, launching in July, and we really want to surpass the reach and impact that we had in, on 2013, in, in 2013, um, and you know I think get to 3,000 events, get to 6,000 contributors. We also want to, by the end of Q3, move to a year-round Teach the Web program. And so what that means is we in the last two years, really focus on WebMaker on these two, three month Maker Party campaigns. We really want to see people now teaching the web all year round, which happens, but we haven't systematically supported it. And so something like WebMaker clubs or other ways that volunteers can run activities all year round with the support of Mozilla, that's by the end of the Maker Party this year, at the end of September, by the end of Q3, something we really want to have sorted out and well underway. We also, as we go through the summer, uh, want to do some market research in particular on something we're calling learning metrics dashboards, which will help uh, educators get the most out of using WebMaker with the people that they're teaching. And finally, we want to announce uh, the Mobile Opportunity Project, this digital inclusion initiative, publicly with our partners. We, we got it rolling in Q2. We have a big meeting happening early in July in London with a lot of those partners. We want to get some early research written, some framing, maybe some demos, and actually announce the initiative during Q3. So a lot going on on the WebMaker and the mobile opportunity piece in Q3. There is also a lot on the overall Grow Community goal, which we're doing jointly with MoCo. The goal is really to get to 10K, so halfway towards our goal. Uh, over the course of uh, 10K contributors over the course of this quarter, as well as do things like better funnels with Get Involved, better training materials for MozCamps, and I'm particularly excited to see badges launch, hopefully in Q3, to recognize different contributors uh, and what they brought to Mozilla. And then uh, finally, um, the, our Q3 revenue goals is that we've you know gotten to the point where we've got uh, one million in new grants in the door, and three million out there uh, under review for 2015. And finally, that we've got the end of year campaign for individual activities uh, designed and out there with MoCo um, and ready to go. And that end of year fundraising campaign is a really big piece in terms of both messaging Mozilla's brand as a nonprofit and bringing, uh, hopefully this year, about two and a half million dollars of funding in. So that's a, a quick overview of the main things that we talked about in the board meeting a couple weeks ago and where we came out of Q2, where we are going into Q3 as the MoFo team. You can see also a lot of collaboration across Mozilla with MoCo initiatives like Firefox OS uh, and on the, uh, the policy front and, and with Firefox. Uh, really, really excited about where the rest of this year goes. If you have questions, throw them in the comments on this blog post or, of course, uh, take a look through the whole set of slides I put up and throw comments on that as well. Thanks very much.